sheet that I'm going to send around and we just need your name, email address, and then the program that you're in. I'm the Associate Dean with the Graduate School and I'm also representing the Division of Research and Graduate Studies and uh, we're co-sponsors of this and uh, we're glad that y'all can make it here. It's a series of five different talks. Um, we'll double check on the dates of those. Um, someone mentioned one of them may be during fall break. Is that uh, right? And that was intentional? Okay. So people will be here. Some people come on in. Um, we will be recording that session. So that session will be recorded, so it'll be available for everyone otherwise. Um, I'll be making a couple of sessions myself just to uh, get up to speed and learn. But um, really, the lion's share of virtually all of these workshops, we have to thank library uh, library services for all of this work. And uh, um, Dave Heisel and uh, Jeannie are going to be um, running these workshops. So we're here sort of for moral support. And if you need to contact anyone in the graduate school, you're welcome to contact me or anyone else. My name again is Tom McConnell. Um, uh, Belinda Patterson will be at some of these workshops also. She's our other associate dean. But um, uh, Jeannie Hoover will be running this, and I'll turn it over to Jeannie then. Thank you very much for coming. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Jeannie Hoover, and I'm a reference librarian here at Joyner Library. Today, what I'm going to go over um, is how to use RepWorks, how to access it, import some citations, uh, create a bibliography, and then I'll also show you Write and Cite and how you can use that when you're writing your papers. I have my information up here. 
um, feel free to send me an email if you have any questions after the session. It's just huberj at ecu.edu. I'd be more than happy to sit down with you um, or answer any questions by email, um, also by phone, and that type of thing. Go ahead and close the door. Um, so before I get, begin, does anyone have any questions, or has anybody um, used RefWorks before? One, couple. How about Endo or Mendeley? Okay, uh, Zotero. Okay, so new territory for most people. Um, if you have any suggestions about anything that's worked for you in the past, feel free to call out. Um, all right, so I'll go ahead and get started. The first thing that I wanted to show you, um, on top of emailing me, you can also contact the research desk. We are located, if you go outside this door here, um, just make a left and around the corner, you'll see a big purple wall with three desks in front of it. Um, that's where we're located and we're there usually from about 8 a.m. to about midnight most days. Friday and Saturday we close a little bit early and Sundays we come in a little bit later. But we're always here to help you so you can stop by the desk. Um, under the Ask Us, there's also options to send us an email. There's an email form. You also have our phone number. And then you finally have a consultation request that if you click on, um, hopefully it'll work. Okay, it's thinking. We basically just fill it out if you're running into any kind of problems, um, whether it's RefWorks or any kind of research problems, finding articles, um, starting your searching for literature reviews. You can always request a consultation. Just fill out your name, uh, come from a uh, phone number, and then down at the bottom you can just include what you're working on, what kind of problems you're having, and then usually within 24 hours a librarian will contact you about meeting and we can meet with you either in person, by phone, um, by email, we can also do it by chat too. So whatever works best for you. Um, just keep in mind if you do it on the weekends, it's probably better to actually come into the library or give us a call because um, we probably won't check it until Monday. So if you put it in like Friday evening, just stop by the desk Saturday or Sunday. Any questions about that? Okay. So we'll go ahead and jump into RefWorks. And there's a few ways that you can get to RefWorks. Um, I think the easiest way to do it is up at the top of our homepage is a tab for research, research tools. And if you hover over that, you'll see RefWorks listed under course tools. So you can go ahead and click on that. So that is one option. The other option that you can do under the one search box, you should see find databases. And if you click on that, you will get an A to Z list over here on the right hand side. And you should see an R. Um, so if you click on that, you'll see RefWorks listed. And so you can connect that way too. Okay. So let everybody get settled here for a second. So while everybody's computers are starting up, basically what RefWorks is, is it's a citation management type of database and tool. So you can import citations, you can export cit citations. Um, when you're writing papers, you can create bibliographies off of what you actually cited in your paper. Um, it can also, you can use it for uh, internet. So if you're, is to get web pages. So if you were on the EPA site, you can actually pull that uh, information into your RefWorks account, so that way you can also cite websites. Um, it also works for any kind of open access articles or anything like that. Okay, so did everybody get into RefWorks okay? Okay. Um, I will come around here in a second and get you set up. Okay, so you should come to this page. Up here at the top, there's sign up for a new account. And if you click on that, just fill it in with your email address. Um, you can create whatever login and password that you want, so it does not have to be tied to your pirate ID and password. Um, and just kind of go through the setup. I want to make sure everybody has an account before they leave. The one thing 
on the next page, this little code can be kind of hard to read. Um, so it may take a couple tries. I think I did it a little earlier today. It took me about four tries to get it. Um, so if you need to get a new one, you can just hit this refresh button and it'll change it for you. So I'll give everybody a second to do that and I'll walk around and make sure everybody um, is at RefWorks. Oh. I'm set up. Okay, so it looks like everybody got in okay. Um, I did want to mention that you can create multiple accounts. So if you're working with a research group, this has worked really well for graduate students. Um, you can create a research account and then that way you can feed citations into it. Um, so again, you do not have to do your login and password tied to your pirate ID. You can create like research group one and a password of test one or something like that and then share it with your group. Um, so that's another way if you're working on any kind of research group that might be helpful. All right. Okay. So for some of you, you're going to have a blank screen here. Um, I'm going to take you through the different major buttons that they have up here at the top. Um, I'd like everybody to create a new folder and all you have to do is click on new folder up here at the top. Name it whatever you'd like to name it. Um, you can also create subfolders within a larger folder. Uh, so if you're working on a big project, that's a really nice way to keep organized, um, especially if you're doing a big paper. You can do subfolders according to the headings of your paper or something like that. And once you have a folder, they're going to show up on the right-hand side here. Um, I don't know how many folders you can have. Um, I have about like 20 or 30, so you can put as many as you want in there. And if you have a subfolder, it'll show up with this little arrow next to it, and then you can just do the drop-down and access your subfolders. Okay. The Create Bibliography, once you get some citations in there, we'll do that a little bit later. That's how you would create it. It's a shortcut to it. The next button is Add a New Reference. And this one is pretty easy. Um, this is where you'd actually manually put in your citation information. So if you have a print book, uh, you just click on that. By default, you get the major citation styles, so APA, MLA, um, I believe AMA, Chicago. And I'll show you how you can add citations to that list. But those are the default ones. So you can always change that by just clicking on it and selecting the one that you want. And it gives you a lot of different options as far as what type of material it is. The default one's going to be a journal article um, for the most part. But if you're doing artwork, books, book chapters, you can always change that. And these will update according to what you select. So you just type in the information, um, author's title, publication year, volume, et cetera. 
I would recommend using the full names for authors, even if you're using APA, that way um, you have it in case you decide to change your um, citation style later on. It doesn't matter uh, What's that? to use the last name first or the first name first. Uh, I usually do last name first. <clears throat> Any questions about that? And then all you have to do is hit save reference, um, and that's going to save it into your citations. Most of our databases um, have shortcuts, so you don't really have to manually put it in. Um, but in case you do have something you want to put in, you can do it there. Um, up here at the top are different is a reference um, drop down. The add new is the same thing as a reference button. It's how you manually put it in. The import option, and this is, can be a little bit tricky. Does anybody like in health sciences or College of Health and Performance or anything like that? Okay. Um, some of our databases will actually make you download a file. And so what you have to do is you have to import that file. Um, PubMed is a perfect example of that. So if you run into that, when you go into a database and it'll say export citation, um, it'll actually download a file. And if that happens to you, up under references, you want to go to import. Um, so a variety of our databases do that. It just depends on which ones that you use the most. And then the export option is if you decide to use EndNote, Mendeley, um, Zotero, you can actually export your entire database into um, EndNote or something like that. Okay, so the next section is the view section. Um, really quickly, there's the all references if you want to look at all of your references that you have. There's also my list, so if you want to keep track of maybe some citations that you want to come back to, you can create a my list. Um, and drop those citations in there and then come back to it. The really nice thing is a duplicate search and it's going to search for exact and close duplicates. Um, so if I do an exact duplicate search, it's going to search through all of my folders and pull the citations that I have multiple copies of. Because um, I guarantee you know, you'll search on Monday and then two weeks later you go back searching, you'll probably bring in a couple of the same references. Um, so that's one way to get them out of your database is to do a duplicate search and then you can just check off the ones that you want to delete and then hit the delete button here. Um, on top of that, anything that you delete, this is probably the biggest problem with RefWorks and something um, just to leave with to know, if you delete a reference, it's deleted across your entire account. Um, so I could drop a citation the same citation into multiple folders and if I delete it from one folder it's going to delete it from all of the folders. Uh, there is a remove folder option and I'll show you that. Just be careful with the delete option. If you accidentally delete something under the view you have deleted references and they actually hold it there for 30 days. So if you delete something by accident you can get it back. Um, that's just the one thing to be kind of careful of. Search option, uh, this I personally don't really use that much, but it might be useful to you. If you want to search your database, um, there's also an option for online catalog or database, and you can search databases like PubMed, um, that type of thing. But it's a very basic search. You're probably better off going into the actual database and exporting those citations into it. Okay, any questions so far? Yeah. If you accidentally delete something from one folder and you have it in five others, and then you retrieve it because it's been less than 30 days, do you have to repopulate it in each one of those five? That's a really good question. Um, I don't know. We There's can no try it. To go back to okay. Yeah. Um, so let me go ahead and. So the question was, if you delete something from a folder and it takes, you have it in multiple folders and you delete it and then you get it back, how do you, does it go back into those folders automatically? And I actually don't know. So Uh, 
Um, so there's a little restore button. And it looks like I put it back into my folder. I don't know. Actually, I, takes, I guess it takes it back to your not in folder. So you would have to put it back in. That's a really good question. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. All right. So why don't we um, actually go ahead and bring in some citations. And if you go back to the library homepage, uh, I'm going to show you two examples that you can do. The first one I'm going to show you is OneSearch. Um, so if you know a topic that you are going to research, you can put that in. I'm just going to do a quick search on hydraulic fracturing and hit search. And then these are the results that I get. And you can actually save these to a folder over here on the right hand side. So it'll automatically save it to your folder down here at the bottom. And once you click on your folder, you'll have an option to export it to RepWorks up here at the top. And I'll do that one more time. Um, go ahead and save a couple of things into your folder on OneSearch. So just check it off here. And then down at the bottom, you should see saved items, the right hand corner. And then if you click on that, you'll get a list and you'll see RefWorks up at the top. You may not use OneSearch that much, but if you have something that you can't find the full text, um, sometimes it works if you plug in the article title into OneSearch. And that'll bring it up. Um, also, if you have like an actual print book, you can type in the title into OneSearch. If it brings up the citation information, then you can export it into RefWorks instead of actually manually putting it in. Um, so that's a way to kind of shortcut it. Click on RefWorks, and then it should bring you in, should get this page, and you can go to View Last Imported Folder. Okay. Did everybody bring at least one thing in? Awesome. Okay. So to kind of go through the different options that you have once you have it in your last imported folder, you can move it to a folder and there's two ways you can do it. You can click on this little gray area at the top and actually drag it in to a folder that you want over on the right hand side. Or you can check it off and there's a little um, icon with a folder right here in the center and then you'll get your list of folders listed down below. And then you can just click on that folder. So pretty easy. So you have your delete button. Again, if you want to delete something and it deletes across the board, um, you can print it. There's this little small icon that's another folder with a little red dot. That's how you actually remove it from a folder. So if I wanted to take these citations out of my last imported folder. Um, I can click this button and it'll remove those. I don't have that button. Mm -hmm. I don't have that little button with the. Oh. It is there if you open the folder. So if you click, if you go into a folder, then that button is yeah, maybe if you're in all references, you may not see that. Um, so I was in my last imported folder, and so that's where it, it popped up. Okay, any questions? Awesome. Really quickly, there's a little piece of paper and pencil under a citation in that gray bar. If you click on it, that's how you can actually go in and edit the information. Um, this example is perfect because Chemical and Engineering News is in all caps. Um, I don't want it in all caps when I do my citations. So I would go in and actually delete this and, and edit that. The other nice thing that you can do, you can upload attachments. So if you wanted to attach the document, you can, um, whether that's an article, your own notes about the 
um, article, whatever you want. Under the additional fields, if you click on that, you have more options. Um, there's a personal notes section. So again, if you wanted to comment on an article or keep track of it, you can put your notes in there and it'll save it. Um, just be sure to save the reference down here at the bottom. For articles, you'll see this Find It button, um, and I believe it shows up even for websites and books, but it won't work for those. It should connect you to the full text of that article. Um, this one, it doesn't, but if it did connect me to the full text, it would bring up the full article. Okay. So any questions about anything like that? You do have access when you bring in an article, you will have access to the abstract and everything that comes with it. So when you go into a database, everything that's in that record is gonna be uh, in your citation information here. Okay. So if you want to go ahead and actually bring a citation in from a database, You go back to the library homepage. Um, you can go to the Find Databases link, and it really doesn't matter which one you click on. I'm going to go ahead and go to Academic Search Complete, which is under the A's, <coughs> and it's the third one down. Um, I'm just going to show you this one because of our, a lot of our databases look like this, so. For the most part, you probably will be using a database that looks like this one. You can type in your search and hit search. And when you find a result that you want, you can click on it. And the way to export it is over here on the right hand side you'll see an export um, depending on the database you're in it might be up here at the top um, down on the right hand side so sometimes you might have to kind of look around for it but for the most part it's going to have it as an option for you so when you export where does it go when you hit export in this one you leave it to the default which is RefWorks, and you hit save and it'll automatically put it into my account. Um, if you're not logged in, you'll get prompted to log in with your uh, RefWorks ID, and then it'll take it into your account. So any questions about that? So if yep. we're using PubMed, how do we get it to where it's supposed to go? <laughs> yeah. Do you have it? Oh, okay. There's two ways you can do it. Um, we can do send to you, citation manager, create file. It's going to put it in your downloads. Okay. Um, let me show you that example okay. really quick. Uh, I'm going to go back to PubMed to show you what happens when you have to actually download it. Because um, this will be for a variety of databases, and I'm not sure how many this will happen with. Um, so what I want to do is I want to send it to my citation manager and I would just check that off and create a file and then it'll pop up down here at the bottom. If I go back to my RefWorks account, I go to the import option And the only thing that you really want to pay attention to is it'll default to a specific format up at the top. And for PubMed specifically, they have a PubMed option. Um, so you just want to make sure that you check that off because if you bring it in under the RIS format, it won't show up. So again, just pay attention when you download the file, what kind of file it is, and then just change it. And then you would go to choose file. Um, should be under your downloads. 
open, and then import. And it should pop up. So there's a, few to, there's a little bit more steps with that one, um, but definitely know that it is possible to do that. Does that kind of answer your question? Okay, awesome. Any other questions about importing anything? Okay. So now I'll take you to create bibliography, and this is the best part. Up here at the top, just go to bibliography, create bibliography, or you can do the button. Um, again, this will prompt you for the citation style that you want. It also prompts you for the file type, so HTML, um, Word, whatever you want. And then you can create bibliography. If you have your pop-ups on, like I do, it's not going to show up. So you may need to turn off your pop-up blocker. Um, or you can come down here and click on it, that little link, and it should open it up. So it does a citation for you. Um, I mentioned before about the output styles. If you need a different citation style, you can go to Output Style Manager under Bibliography. And this is where you can select whatever citation style you need. So it has pretty much every kind of journal you could think of, every citation style. So all you do is just select the one that you want and then move it over. And it'll automatically save it. Um, you can actually go in and manually edit the citation. So if you were using APA and you wanted um, the full name to show up, you can say that you want to make sure that your citations come out with um, the full name type thing. Uh, that takes a little bit more work, but you can do that under Output Style Editor. And so that's how you would do it. If you get to that point, just send us an email. We can walk you through those steps. Pretty easy. All right. And so the last thing I was going to show you is a write and cite. And this is probably my favorite feature about RefWorks. Um, I'm not going to show you Ref Grab It, but that's the one where you actually download into Firefox or IE and it'll pull the website information for you. Um, so right in sight, if you click on it, you'll get your download options over on the right. And it'll automatically download into Microsoft Word. Yeah, one that you have. Okay, okay. And it'll actually tell you, I've done this, if you accidentally download the wrong one, it'll say that your computer has the 64-bit one. Um, so once it downloads into Write Insight, it'll pop up under RefWorks. You log in, and this is the one tricky part. You'll get a group code, um, username and password, so if you know the group code, you can write that in to kind of take that out of the equation and just make it easier for you. Um, whenever you log into your RefWorks account, if you go to Write Insight, you'll always see this little code listed, and that's the code that you can just copy paste into Word. And when I log in, I just paste it right into the login code and hit login. Uh, I think that's a little bit easier because you can jump from computer to computer and log into your account. Um, it'll take it a little bit to sync. There you go. So I can start writing my paper. I can insert a citation, insert new. It's going to give me all of my folders that I have. Um, so I can access any folder, any subfolder. I select the one that I want. And then I'll get all of my citations, select the one that I want to cite, and hit OK. And it'll automatically put the citation in for me. This one defaults to AMA, so if I wanted APA, I can change that, and it'll change the citation. I can continue writing, insert another citation. And then once I finish, 
and go to bibliography options and insert bibliography and then it'll do the citations off of what i cited um, so that is an amazing lifesaver <laughs> save you some time and energy um, so that's a really nice thing about RefWorks. So that's pretty much all I had. If you have questions, again, feel free to contact the desk. There's also some tutorials under the help in RefWorks. You can launch the help file or go to the tutorials. I'll have a few videos, um, and that'll help answer some questions for you. Is it any questions about anything? No, I saw uh, APA 5th edition and 1st edition. I want to see the differences between the two. Where can I find the you could probably just do the bibliography in each style to see what the differences are. Um, I don't know if you would get an actual list of what is changed between them. And I think we have the old APA style, like the fifth edition, probably upstairs in the stacks if you wanted to like compare and contrast them. Any other questions? Awesome. Where can you find an output style? The output style? You can request a new one. If like you want to change it? Or if you want, like, you can't find it, like, we have to use American and Anthropology. That, um, you can do two things. Mm -hmm. If you don't it see it, yeah, you can go into, like, the editor and get to the closest one possible okay. and then actually go in and change it. Um, or I think you can actually contact RefWorks and ask for it, okay. and they might actually put it in for you. Yeah, I know there's a download for EndNote that you can yeah. <laughs> um, But no, that's happened before. If there's some citation that isn't exactly how you like it, you can make a copy. Um, I think I have a copy under my favorites. Copy of Genie Style, or a copy of Transactions of American Fisheries Society. Um, and I can go in and change how that actually comes out. Any other questions? Yeah. Just for websites? Yeah. Is, is there like a Chrome plugin? Or is, it it's the additions. Yeah. is there a Chrome plugin for that? There wasn't. I don't know if they updated it lately. Um, yeah, no, it no, it looks like they still have it for Firefox and IE. Hopefully Chrome will come out soon. <laughs> Were you asking about the shortcut yeah. on how to get the, the website link? Which one? Yeah. Yeah. The website link if you want to use a uh, link in your bibliography. Um, from like an article or something? Mm -hmm. It should capture yeah. that when you bring it in. Um, if for just like a regular website, you can download the ref grab it and install it, and then you can actually capture that. It'll be, um, it'll show up in your toolbar as like a ref grab it or down here at the bottom. Um, I don't have it installed on this computer, unfortunately, but it will capture like the website, the title information, and that type of thing. And I think for open access articles, it'll bring in like the DOI uh, and stuff like that. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody have the little poster sheet with all the talks on it? There are five in this series. I should have brought mine. I just want to advertise them. I'll, we got it. Thank you. So this is the RefWorks. Um, I'm going to go down this way. Literature Reviews is uh, next, that's October 8th, and that one, I guess, is fall break, but it will be recorded. Scholarly Writing is October 22nd. Responsible Conduct of Research is November 5th, and Copyright and Scholarly Communication is November 19th. These are all really valuable. And uh, again, all kudos to the library uh, for uh, 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 David and Joan for putting these on. So please attend as many as you can. This is just fantastic stuff. I've been around a long time when I did my dissertation. Uh, 
I didn't, I, some software was around, I didn't use any of it, but mistakes were, were all over the place. So, yeah. so this is just uh, unreal as far as you know, dinosaurs like me. What I'd also like to mention is, is um, we also will be having an ETD workshop. So how many of you are workshop? Yeah. Um, electronic thesis dissertation okay. workshop? How many of you are graduating either this semester or next semester or planning on graduating um, either one of these semesters? So not too many. The rest of you are going to be around for a little while, which is good. But um, just uh, we'll be holding one of those. We have, thank you. We'll be holding um, one of those as well, um, probably after fall break. So that will go through the process. A lot of the information is on the website. If you just want to be thinking about it as you're going near and, and dreaming for the day that's, that's coming up rapidly. But we'll be having a workshop to go through that whole process as well, again, with major help from some others in the library. But, um, but this is all their workshop. <laughs> I'm not taking any credit for it. Um, I'm thanks to them for doing a super job. Thank you very much all for coming. Thank you. <laughs> I, I feel guilty stepping up because this is all you got. Um, is everyone able to so sign one of these? Are you putting on, are you putting on, are you putting on all the other four? Or are you doing combinations? Yeah, he's, he's doing the other four. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you're doing this one, and he may have some other people coming in to help in some of the other ones. So who are you doing the other four? That's fantastic. Thank you. Well, Angela Whitehurst, the, the head of research instruction, will be doing the literature Okay. And I don't know her. Okay, yeah. But that'll be good. Um, I'll, I'll make as many of these as I can. Terrific, yeah. And who else for some of Well, the uh, University Writing Center will be doing a third session on scholarly writing. Okay. And I think Aaron Herman, yeah. yeah. okay. I think the thesis director would be. Okay. And that's the one that Will Banks does? Is that the... Um, yeah. Or associate? Yeah. He's, 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 he's a yeah. And then... Um, um, for the um, for the ethics, um, you actually have someone from Norm Ashley's office, uh, right. a new lawyer. In fact, I don't know where she has to be. I forget. I'm blanking on her. Yeah, we met her actually the last time was before, but you and I saw her at the orientation session. I think. And uh, she was in the same session. Uh, and then for the final one, no, uh, we're going to it's on copyright scholarly yeah. issues. We're going to have yeah, where it's like it's an honor. No, she, yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. Yeah. I need to get him to get to know him because I guess he may be one of the main people like, that helps <laughs> me with the electronic like, <laughs> dissertation workshops. I'll be taking those over from Melinda graduate, but I'm hoping she'll attend. Um, so all you have to do is go and minimize that. But apparently he's a uh, uh, When you go to your really own computer, you don't even have to go into Word yet. Yeah. Yeah. He's actually going to be co-doing the session with Joseph Thomas. And then right. Okay. So, so right. I know Joseph real well. Yeah. So pick That's the true. download that you that need according to like, whatever computer you have. That sounds really good. It has to be that one. That one's already And then once you download it, it'll show up. Yes, unless you have a Mac, the there's different. Mm -hmm. So we'll see different there's other versions. Like this one's are for Mac. Yeah. Those ones are for just PCs. PCs okay. And should if you download the wrong one, yeah, yeah. it'll pop up and say you should have the other version. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to really worry about that. So for this system? Yeah. And then. Oh, I'm sorry, Jane. 